Well, welcome back to the year of discipleship. I am so excited about today's message because this is one of the most important things that pastors don't spend enough time talking about, and that is God's love. When I was a kid, I remember going to this really fancy restaurant. It was for a wedding and it was on the beach at the Ritz Carlton. And one of the waiters brought me out my dinner. And you know, you have your choice at weddings between chicken and steak. So I got the steak and I was so excited to eat it because I knew that this restaurant was the best in the world. Literally, if there, there was any steak to have, it was this steak. And I remember this waiter brought out the steak and he said, if you can't cut it with a spoon, it's not served at the Ritz Carlton. And I was like, who is this guy? And I looked down at my plate and I said, sir, where's the rest of the food? <laughs> it was this tiny little steak. Have you ever been to like a fancy place and sometimes it's just, it's beautiful food, but it's just not enough? Well, you know what? That's like the world's love. It's the best the world has to offer, but it's still not enough to fill you. We need a love that's greater than this world has to offer. In fact, we all want that love. We want to be fulfilled. We want to have peace. We want to have lasting joy. We want to experience healing in our lives and forgiveness, and we want to find our calling. But when we're in this broken world, we can't find that because the world can't meet your God-sized needs because God is so much bigger than this world. It's like if you're in a relationship with a person Another human being, a fallible human being, isn't gonna be able to meet all of your needs. So we all go on this thing that I call a false quest. We go on a journey to pursue all the world has to offer in hopes of finding true love and true satisfaction. You know, people move from all over the United States to Hollywood because they're seeking fame. And they say, you know, if I can just be famous, if I can just be in a movie, I'll make it and I'll feel fulfilled. But how many of you know that Hollywood actors are some of the most depressed people in the world? All the people who want fame, once they get it, start hiding from it. <laughs> Have you seen celebrities? They duck into cars, they hide their faces, and the one thing that they thought was gonna fulfill them ended up hurting them the most. In fact, there's also people that move to Nashville in Tennessee because they wanna be the next big country superstar. I watch a show called The Voice. And on this show, there's a bunch of people auditioning and they're also on this quest. Unfortunately, many are on this false quest, trying to fill this God-shaped hole in their heart with everything but God. And one contestant in their interview before they went on the stage to perform in front of the judges said, I know, I'll know I'm enough if the judges turn for me. I'll know I'm enough if the judges turn for me. I heard that and I was so sad for that little girl because she was thinking that her worth and who she was was based on the opinion of another fallible human being. What that girl wanted was love. That's what we all want. We want a love that's greater than this world can offer. But we have this misconception about our lives. We think that a career will solve our identity problem. We think that a relationship will solve our loneliness problem. We think that money will solve our unhappiness problem if I just can make another million. Or we think that drugs or alcohol will solve our pain problem. We go to lesser lovers to fill that hole in our heart. But all of these things just highlight our need for something more than they have to offer, something deeper than they have to offer, and something greater. And today we're talking about God's love, which is a greater love. You know, because we are all born of God and made in his image, there's nothing besides a thriving love relationship with God that will bring an end to this false quest that we're pursuing. There's a story in the Bible in Luke chapter 15. Uh, it's called the prodigal son. I think it was misnamed. I think it should be called the compassionate father. But the prodigal son has everything he could ever want. And this represents God's love. He was at home with his father, but he decided to go into the world and try to find a love that was greater than he already had. And he went out and he lived wildly. In fact, when he left, he told his father, he said, I want my inheritance now. <laughs> Basically what he was saying to his father is, I wish you were dead so I could have your money. And he left and he got prostitutes and he got, you know, gambled and he did all of the wild things in the world like we all do on our false quest to try to find this greater love. But guess what happened? He ended up in a famine 
in a distant land where he missed his father and he missed food <laughs> because he found himself feeding pigs. He wasted all of his money. And that's what we do. We waste our hearts. We pour out our hearts to this world that can't give it back to us. He found himself feeding pigs and he said, you know what, the pig food looks so good, I just wanna eat it. And then he came to his senses, the Bible said, and he ran home. And guess what happened? He had a father that ran to him. You know, in those days, it would be ridiculous to see an old man in a robe start running towards his son. You know, it's just not something you saw in the ancient Near East. But the compassionate father came back and gave him that big embrace and that big hug. But just like the prodigal son, we have God-sized needs that can't be met by this world, can't be met by another person. And if you try to find love without God, you're gonna be completely lost. You're gonna be completely unfulfilled. You're not gonna understand God's joy and you're not gonna have the best that God has for you. So today I wanna to talk about the five needs that only God's love can meet in your life. And my hope is that today, you would adopt this belief that only God can meet my real needs. It's crazy to think like in a relationship that you could you know, trust somebody else to meet all your needs for you. It's never gonna happen. You know, we have this fantasy or we have like this kind of Disneyland approach to love that everything's just gonna be sunshine and rainbows. But there's five needs that only God's love can meet. What's the first one? This is an important one. It's peace of heart and mind. When we give God our worry, this is what he promises, he will give us his peace. In fact, John chapter 14, 27 in the Living Bible Translation says this. This is Jesus, he said, I am leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart, and the peace that I give isn't fragile like the peace the world gives. Do you hear that? He's basically saying the peace that the world can give you is fragile. It can't hold up to all your needs, but the peace that I give you will sustain you. In fact, at the end of that verse, he said, so don't be troubled or afraid. The God of the universe says to you today, don't be troubled or afraid. My love is all you need. The second need that only God's love can meet is complete healing in your life. In fact, when we give God our hurts, he gives us his healing. You know, if you give the world your hurts, it's just gonna hurt you even more. <laughs> Psalm 147.3 says this, he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. When you, when you hear that verse, the word heals is such a big word because the world's healing is like a band-aid. All the world can do for your pain is cover it up. But God's healing is like a surgery that deals with the pain. You know, the world can mask your pain. You can have some alcohol, you can take some pills, you can join a program, but only God's love can do the heart surgery that you desperately need today. The third need that only God's love can meet in your life is lasting joy. Lasting joy. How many of you know that happiness is based on happenings? Like if we just live based on happiness, it's like, well, today somebody did something nice for me, but then they were mean to me yesterday but I get to go to my favorite restaurant, but I'm kind of sad about life. It's like, it's this roller coaster, and we aren't supposed to live just with happiness and sadness and just a roller coaster of emotions. God gives us lasting joy, which is stable. It's like an undercurrent that is constant. It's like a confident calming. Um, this is what the Bible says in John 16, 20, in the second half of that verse. It says, you will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. You know, if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, you're not promised this joy. But when you accept Jesus Christ into your life, he gives you a peace that passes understanding and a joy that fills your heart. You know, here's the interesting thing about the world. It offers temporary happiness, but the true lasting joy comes based on your righteous position in God's family. When you know that you belong to God and that God is bigger than all your problems, you have a joy that you've never experienced before. So my question to you is, how do you keep that joy? How do, you, how do you tap into God's joy in your life? Well, I wanna give you a simple solution and maybe this acronym will help you. It's J-O-Y, Jesus, others, and you. So many times in the world, we're focusing on ourselves. We put you in front of the train. And because we let 
me or you guide the train, it swerves off the track. But when we put Jesus and his faithfulness in front of that train, all the train cars behind it go smoothly. Many times in life, we focus on our needs, what I want, what's best for me. But when you focus on Jesus, he transforms your heart and he gives you that joy. And the second thing is helping others, loving others. And then finally, you. You take yourself into consideration last. And when you put these things in the right order, you will find that lasting joy. Number four, what's that fourth need that God's, only God's love can meet? Well, it's true love. It's true love. When we give God our fears, he gives us his love. Now, this is something that I want to share with you because it's really important to understand. We're talking about a false quest. We're talking about trying to find love in a broken, unlovable world. This is what was written in 2 Timothy thousands of years ago, and it couldn't be more true today. You talk about the Bible not being relevant for today. Well, check this out. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 says, but mark this. He's basically saying like later, you're going to need this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. <laughs> Have you found that on Bravo TV? Lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, and check this out, without love, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Is that where you want to find your love? Do you want to look into the world that has no love, that, that the Bible says is without love? and try to find a love that's gonna sustain you, you can't do it. In fact, there's a greater love, and that love in 1 John 4, 18 says this, there is no fear in love, because love drives out all fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. On this journey of discipleship, one of the most important things that you can learn is that Jesus loves you that Jesus loves you and that only Jesus can fulfill you. You know, many times in my life, I've had great things come. I've had uh, a great job. I've had great relationships. I've had a lot of great things. And I bet Solomon in the Bible could relate to that too. He had more of everything than anyone who ever existed. Yet he said it's all meaningless. And today I wanna tell you that you can live your whole life you can fill it with all the things that you think you're gonna like. You can buy a car that three months later is gonna be boring. You can buy a new house that you're gonna get over in five or six months. You can buy all these things, but at the end, you're actually gonna be even more broken because you've invested pieces of your heart into all those things and they failed you. I don't want you to do that. I want you to know from my life and Solomon in the Bible wants you to know from his life and so many people that have money and have things and have cars and houses, they would want to tell you the same thing too if they were being honest. It can't fulfill you. You need God's true love. The fifth need that only God's love can fulfill in your life is complete forgiveness. Complete forgiveness. When we give God our sins, he gives us his forgiveness. I don't know what it is about God, but he always likes to trade up. You know, he says, come and cast your burdens on me and I'll care for you. Come and give me your worries. I'll give you my peace that surpasses understanding. Ask of me and I'll give you more than you could ever dream or imagine, Ephesians 3.20. I think it's amazing that God always trades up with us. But the problem is we don't start talking to God. We don't tell him what we need. With complete forgiveness, you remember that guy in the Bible that comes to Jesus and he says, how many times do I gotta forgive this guy? Is it seven times? And then Jesus is like, no, 70 times seven. He wasn't saying like an actual number, but he was signifying that we need to continually forgive. And you know what? That's something that we all struggle with. That's something that the world can't do for you. The world can't continually forgive. We hold grudges here in the world because this is literally where Satan holds control. Like the world is under Satan's control right now, but heaven in your future is held by God. So this is what 1 John 1, 9 says, and this is what kind of healing and what kind of forgiveness God can give you. It says this in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness, did you hear that? Everything that you've done in your life, God can forgive. You know, you might've thought I'm too far gone. I can't be with God anymore. I've blown it. It's impossible. What do you think? You're greater than God's love? Do you think all the things that you've done is, is crazier than he can forgive? Absolutely not. And you know the ultimate love expression in the Bible, 
and this is where I want to end with, is that God sent his one and only son to die for our sins. God himself sent his son who was fully God to leave heaven, to come to this broken earth that we're on. You know, the same earth that in Genesis 3, sin came into. And Genesis 4, murder started happening. In Genesis 6, God said all wickedness has prevailed. That's just the first six chapters. God decided to come in that kind of world to make us right with him and to guarantee us a home in heaven. So my question to you today is, where are you going to find your love? Is this world enough for you? Is this world going to satisfy you? Is another car or another house? Or what if you go on this false quest that you're on and you find yourself in Hollywood and you get a movie, but what if you don't find another one? Or what if you don't even get into the movie? What then? You need a love that's going to sustain you. So who are you going to choose to meet your needs today? Is it going to be God or this world? God bless.